we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started our videos are made possible by ranger rob poopy bags available at amazon right now Hello, everyone, and welcome to Easy Street. You can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio. You can find it on Spreaker, several other platforms like iHeartRadio and etc., Spotify, you name it. And most of all, you can find this on television on Cutting Edge TV on Roku. That's Cutting Edge TV on Roku. If you have a Roku account, just go into the search, type in Cutting Edge TV, and add us to your menu, and you can catch all of our shows there. There's some really good shows there to enjoy, and you can also do video on demand. So today's video is about internet TV. And I will warn you now, I may be visited by a German Shepherd. And that's okay. Uh, That's what makes these shows real. And uh, I am currently the owner of Cutting Edge TV. And what I've noticed when you go into the internet and uh, you start a television station, and I think we've done very well. We've been in this business for about four months now. And uh, there's a lot to learn. And so this video is about owning and programming and scheduling and what it takes to actually own a television station. Uh, This has been... um, an insight for me. One of the things um, uh, to get started, I had to actually do a little bit of homework because there are some things that kind of shocks you when you first look at it besides the cost. Um, it is definitely, uh, here, let me scoot my camera over here a little bit so I'm more in the center. There. Um, and by the way, you shouldn't wear a green shirt when you're doing a green screen. Just thought I'd warn you that. So you might see a little funny business going on with the colors because it is a green shirt. (laughs) So anyway, uh, Cutting Edge TV, we're very proud of. Um, We are lucky because we've been in the radio business for over almost going on four years with Good Talk Radio under Cutting Edge Radio Network. So over the years, we've learned how to do internet radio. We've dealt with different shows and podcasts. And uh, we make some of our own podcasts and et cetera. And through the years, we've developed a very good radio station. And that helped us when we decided to create Cutting Edge TV. Now, what you're seeing right now is just a a, a page that we have. It's called cuttingedgecontacts.com, which is a a site that uh, tells people um, about advertising and, and, and getting on Cutting Edge TV. Uh, But before all that began, we actually had to decide on creating a, how we're going to create this television station, because there's several ways to do it. You can actually buy software, where, and also you, um, uh, the big problem is where are you going to put your videos? Because you need a video that can, videos that can stream. And then you also need to be able to, coordinate those videos on a schedule. So when we first started looking at Roku, and by the way, we can expand into much, a lot more platforms once we feel comfortable with this platform. (laughs) So anyway, so number one problem is what are you going to do with all the videos? That's the first thing. And also what service do you want to use? You want to use Roku? Do you want to use, uh, Fire Stick, uh, Google um, Videos, etc. There's a, a whole bunch of other platforms. Apple is the other one. <clears throat> so once you kind of decide that, you start looking around, and you look at Roku, and you say, okay, you can sign up with Roku and set up a development account. But the problem is when you set one of those accounts up is where are you going to put your videos? So I looked at Vimeo, and you have to get a pro plan and all that stuff. And I didn't see a, a really good way to – really run a professional television station. And so I searched some more and then there's a lot of some other third part. There's software out there too, which I'm not sure if they're utilizing Vimeo or not. Um, Just didn't set right with me. 
So uh, we ran into a third party company called uh, TV Startups. They provide the servers. That's the most important thing, having the servers. The servers have got to have a lot of space. They've got to be what's called a CMS server, which converts the videos in order to make them stream well. And then you got to have, <coughs> have a platform that not only allows you to schedule those videos the way you want to, but you also have what's called video on demand. So you need a library. And this library has got to be visual to people so they can come into your station. And if they don't want to watch your live stream, let's say they're just interested in coming in to watch uh, Sons, of, Sons of Liberty or Leo Roundtable and uh, all the tons of shows we have. And um, <clears throat> they may just go to the video on demand and binge watch just the program they want to watch or jump through different programs instead of waiting for it to come on the stream. So you have two problems is okay, is once you decide what company to use, you gotta go in and it costs a lot of mon money. There's a setup fee, which is chunky, and there's also a monthly fee, which is chunky. So uh, the setup can be a little costly. Um, it can average from, 250 to thousand dollars depending on what kind of deal you set up uh, the, the monthly is going to be 300 and above uh, depending on what you want to set up and you can expand it and so eventually we may want to have our own uh, TV app we may want to have some other platforms and that number could get up to 600 to a thousand dollars a month so just to give you an idea it's costly it's not like setting up a, a radio station. <clears throat> Although a radio station has a pretty good cost to it because not only do you pay for the platform to put your radio station on, you pay for the stream to go through a licensing company to make uh, so you don't have copyright issues with the music you play. So that can be in up in the hundreds too. So anyway, um, that covers kind of what kind of money you need to know is involved here. So um, if you're running... If you decide you're going to run a platform like this and you've got to let people know that there is this is a costly platform. However, it does. Uh, the amazing thing is Roku has over up to 40 million subscribers right now. Um, Fire Stick is about <clears throat> 35 million. It's catching up with Roku. And then there's Apple and some other ones, too. So you can have the opportunity to uh, to be in front of a lot of people and a lot of countries. Uh, just to give you an idea, let me read them off. And I'm going to have to do some, you know, jumping around in the different screens here to uh, uh, inform you of some stuff. Um, <clears throat> to give you an idea how many countries we now cover, uh, the, now, just because we cover them doesn't mean we're getting them. It means we have to advertise them too. So we'll get into marketing in a minute, but we hit uh, French, uh, <laughs> France, Chile, Ireland, Honduras, Nicaragua, um, United Kingdom, Guatemala, Argentina, United States, El Salvador, Costa Rica, Brazil, Canada, Peru, Panama, Mexico, Colombia, um, just to name a few. Uh, so it's a pretty big region that we can reach and give people free TV. But obviously you found out it's not free in our side. So where do you get the moolah? <laughs> so we found that uh, as time goes on, we will be charging advertisers that want to um, uh, be on our platform. Um, we have a lot of our own products. So we actually have some of our own commercial platforms in there. And Roku can actually run a automated uh, there's several ways you can, uh, well, let me explain a couple more things. Some television stations are subscription-based, and some are free and open to everybody. We're free and open to the public. Uh, however, we will be choosing to put advertising on, which is random commercials that will come on, and we actually get monetized with that. But you say, oh, cool, you can start making money right away? No. You've got to qualify for that 
uh, in order to run commercials on your platform. Now through the third party platform we're using, they have a, a, a advertising platform that we can uh, tap into once we qualify with enough viewers. So it's not that easy. This easy money, they tell you, oh, you can set up a Roku thing, put advertisers on there, and you'll just rake in the dough. That's not how it works. <laughs> it's kind of like YouTube a little bit. You got to qualify. However, this platform, I, I want to let you know clearly, this platform is not like Facebook, and it's not like YouTube. It's a different platform, and, and you're dealing with a whole different monster elephant in a room. <clears throat> so uh, I will show you more internally what we do to get our shows in. So remember, when you're running a radio station, you're dealing with MP3s, small files, just sound files, audio. But when you deal with television, you're dealing with MP4s. Um, let me uh, also show you that when you also set up a television station with our folks, you also have a website. Now, you can let them host your website, which I did. I bought my domain, and I'm letting them host it because um, they really know how to lay out the, uh, the software, which is WordPress, um, to highlight your station. So this website you get, which ours is on cuttingedgenetwork.com, it's cuttingedgenetwork.com, um, has a home page. Let me uh, um, and let me make this a little bigger for you to see. So you can see we have a home page, and usually you'll put about a 10 second video on there, uh, some advertising on it, and down at the bottom is a link where people click on that, and it will actually tap into their Roku account on their computer and add our channel to their menu. Uh, the second part you'll see on this uh, website is uh, I've got several screens going on here and different monitors. So um, is you can actually have your live stream visual on your website. Now it's not as it's the internet and it's a website, so they don't load quite as quickly as say um, it does on Roku. But you can actually see what's playing on Roku right now, which is a, a Paratalk Radio is what's playing right now when I was doing this. Then the next uh, uh, button over here is what they call Video on Demand. This is the cool part, which makes this so much better than regular television, is if, say, you don't want to watch Paratalk Radio right now, you are just interested in, um, in knowing that we have this great uh, library of all kinds of different videos. Uh, Leo Roundtable, we actually got a special... Uh, uh, Christmas, um, two, two and a half hour uh, Christmas Carol uh, audio that's really good that uh, we put on there for a couple, couple of weeks. Uh, but we have like Lear Roundtable, Sons of Liberty, um, uh, John Smith Radio Show, um, uh, Sons of, uh, Tim Brown from S Sons of Liberty. He's on here too, along with Pops and Low, She Said, He Said, which is one of our really popular shows. Uh, Paratalk is just coming on board with us. Uh, Where's my Sage? We have several other new programs coming on just this week and next week. Um, uh, the Undrafted GM, which talks about sports, just did a great interview. Um, and uh, she, she just goes on and on. Paradigm Chimes, Easy Street, this show, uh, um, all of its shows are on here that you can go through. These are ha all half hour shows. Um, and we have a lot of my own. Uh, Ranger Rob Country Living stuff, uh, which is more for the homesteader and things like that, and preppers. RV Talk Radio is on here. Um, cooking with Range Rob is actually a program of mine where I actually do a lot of trigger cooking. Um, Charles Richardson shows on here. We also have set up a program to allow independent film artists to put um, film up here. And also we have new music videos from new artists or indie artists. And uh, we have... Uh, we actually created a category for variety talk shows for people to discover some of the shows we have. We have music. We have some other shows coming on board. And we also have a uh, faith section, which is um, we play on our stream on Sunday mornings. And all those shows are down here as they load. And if you want to just come down and listen to different sermons from two different churches, uh, there's some really good stuff there. And we're going to keep them and let them have a library. So uh, some people just like to hear sermons. Um, so, yeah, um, we also have what's also called the uh, 
uh, Christian Radio Countdown, and we also have Christian Radio uh, Our Show. This is all down here for people to enjoy of those of faith. So that's just a fraction of what's actually what's going on. Our website also tells you a little bit about our website and also how you can contact us and ask us questions. So that's just the website. Um, so the website is nice because it makes it really easy to see as we're programming our television station, uh, we can go and see how well it looks uh, when we do our layouts. So uh, let me move on to a our dashboard. I can't, I think I can show you pretty much um, um, how this works. So we have a couple of ways that shows are sent to us. Uh, some people will, and remember, we're dealing with MP4s now, much bigger files, giant files. So in, in order to even deal with us, you've got to have a Dropbox or Google Drive to get your files to us if you're not streaming live. He's like, what, do you, what are you talking about? Well, some of our shows, like Sons of Liberty and so, several others, um, they stream live to our show. When they stream live to us, they're on our main stream. Now, the cool part is when they do that, we also, uh, I'm going to have to move around here a little bit, so be patient, guys. Um, we have what's called a live recorder. So what happens is, um, let's say at 7 o'clock p.m., um, Sons of Liberty uh, starts a live stream. Our software, as it comes up, it, it plays on Roku Live. But while it's playing on Roku Live, it actually records on our platform, on our software. So when the show's over with, we can just, we have to, and there's more work just because they recorded it. It means we also got to put the title and we got to put the thumbnail on it um, and then put it into our categories here, well, let me, I'm going to confuse you. I know this is very confusing. So as the video shows up and it gets processed, it shows up in here with the latest video it came in. Our last video we just processed was um, the undrafted uh, GM. And uh, <clears throat> and here is where we add in, we have to add in the thumbnail, we have to put in the description and, uh, and so forth. Um, and before and then and even though it's in this category thing, nobody can see it yet until we go to our video categories. Now this is how we organize our categories that you see on the website and on Roku. So you notice when you're um, looking at our website, you saw at the top we had most recent videos. So what we'll do is uh, if I go in here real quick, you can see these are all the videos I loaded. And I don't keep all of I only put like the latest couple of shows that came in the last two or three days because we can get up to three or four videos a day that's coming in or being streamed. Um, for example, this show right here from um, uh, uh, Bradley Dean, which is from Sons of uh, Liberty, he transmitted today at 10 o'clock, um, 12 o'clock, and it recorded. And then when it was all done, it got put into our video list. Right here, which was just below this one, um, and we added the thumbnail and the title and the description, and then we took that video and put it into the different categories we have created for video on demand. So that's the cool part about this is people can be on live TV, which you have to schedule, and I'll show you more about scheduling in a minute, um, like a television show. You can't just do little small shows, 15-minute shows here and there and stuff without a plan. And uh, so anyway, so once we get these in, um, uh, you got to remember, uh, like, for example, the show above it, which was the undrafted GM, um, we had to um, – he couldn't um, stream that to us live, so he, he mailed us the MP4 of the show, which they used um, – Google Drive, and then we download it, and then we have a special piece of software which uh, allows us to upload MP4s to our server, and then it processes on the CMS servers and makes it playable for streaming. So the technology is important, and it's like you could really get into, you could probably save some money if you could figure out how to do the, the scheduling, 
have a server that you know, would cooperate with you and you could coordinate all these shows. But as you can see, I mean, we get tons of shows, tons and tons. This, I mean, these are all videos that have come in and they've got to be organized. And that's the hard thing with television is staying organized. And so that's why we went with this particular company um, to allow us to do that. Um, so let me move us over to managing our shows. Now, this is going to look really weird to you, but these, is, these are how we schedule shows. So um, let's say Leo Roundtable wants us to play his on the stream. You know, um, and remember, all these people are paying us money to have their shows up there because of the cost. So these are paying customers. So we have to be uh, uh, on top of our game here as far as making sure the scheduling works and everything and getting their shows labeled and getting them uh, uh, in the categories and on video demand so people can be seen. So um, you can see like right now we have an afternoon program where sometimes if I don't have shows that are totally scheduled for a certain time, what we'll do is take random shows and take a, like the afternoon, we expect this to run from 12 to 4. So we'll put a sporadic different kinds of shows in there. This is kind of what we call a variance of shows um, between 12 and 4 and allow and, and little commercials in between each show that allows us uh, people to see what's in there. So if I go in here and show you what's in here, um, let me uh, do it this way. Um, let me show you. Oh, that one's playing, so I can't do that. So let's take, um, I'll go to midnight shows. So midnight the morning, six hours worth of shows. Um, so at midnight, we'll actually do a random amount of different shows for all of our clients to get them exposed to new viewers. So if we go inside here, you'll see that I have different shows programmed. And at the top here, I have 5.38 minutes worth uh, worth of uh, of shows in here. And I try to make it six hours because once the program goes all the way through and you don't have anything scheduled, it will start over again. So because this is only five hours and that's six, it'll start over, play this little commercial here, and then go into this one show that's here. But you can see I have our um, sporadic shows in here, and I change this out constantly to help out um, our, uh, our clients to get exposed at different times of the hour, so you to get new followers. So let me go back to uh, managing again. <clears throat> now, a lot of times we may have a show that actually wants to be at a certain time, like Sons of Liberty. Now, we schedule his show at 12, even though he live streams. Why? Is because maybe he, something goes wrong with his stream. Well, then um, one of his shows, prior shows, and most up-to-date shows will play during that time if his stream fails. So uh, you have kind of two different types of scheduling going on. We have blocks of time where we'll put random shows, um, or sometimes we'll do a binge walk to say, all right, maybe midnight to six. Maybe I'll let uh, the John Smith show play uh, all their shows in a row in order uh, for six hours just to let new people see his show. Maybe I'll do the same thing with Leo Roundtable or Sons of Liberty or some of the other shows we have, some of my shows. Uh, sometimes I'll plug in some of my cooking shows in the morning um, to, you know, to catch people that like cooking. And um, so, yeah, so we got two kinds of schedule. Like I said, we have the binge watchers or a, a period of time, say midnight to six or six to 12 or 12 to five or things like that. And we'll put random shows in. Then we have the shows that want to be on a regular schedule on the regular stream. That makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, pretty crazy. Huh? It's not easy. This is not easy. And you got to be patient because you're dealing with big files. So I have these big old files that come in, we download them to our computers, and then we upload them again to the server. And then when they get up there, we have to, not, once they get on the server, we're, we're not done. We've got to actually get it into um, the categories, make sure everything's labeled right. We've got, not only do we have to program the video on demand, but we also have to uh, program them on the schedule to play at their specific times. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can see this is quite, quite um, uh, immense 
and uh, let me bring my screen down over here. I've got um, so so you want to start a television station, huh? Well, uh, the other thing I mean, some people say, well, why don't you put movies on there, Rob? Well, because private channels don't have licenses to do that. However, you could spend the money and, and get and, and with certain, and it's really, it's not robust. Uh, you've got to go out and um, find certain organizations that own certain titles, and you could buy their license, and you could run that on your Roku. Um, but uh, really, if you're going to run your own station, you really should run your own shows. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing. So uh, you don't have a copyright infringement problems. Um, however, if you really, really want to get into movies and stuff like that, you could do it, but it takes some effort and it costs money. The other thing is, why do you want to bring mother movies in? Everybody, that's what all the regular commercial channels are doing. Don't you want to be a little bit unique? We want people to come to Cutting Edge TV for something different. Because, you know, you can only watch, uh, you know, uh, the same movies over and over again so long it gets old. Our stuff never gets old. It's the new and new content, variety of content um, constantly. And then as our shows um, learn how to produce their shows better for television, it gets better and better. Which brings me to your clients. Now, here's a battle that constantly seems to happen is uh, podcasters exactly are, are great. They start learning how to do, let's say you have an hour spot on a radio. You can't take an hour and 15 minutes. You've got to be like 58 minute show and give time for these, um, the radio shows to identify themselves, to put their commercials in, etc. And you can't vary from that. And, 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 that's what you know. What's really good about Good Talk Radio is a lot of our clients already know how to produce a show properly without going over their time and stuff like that. Because if their show goes over, it would mess up the software of the radio station. Well, the same problem comes up with television, um, and so uh, in fact, it's even a little harder because when someone does a live stream to us. It takes our software maybe 15 seconds to 20 seconds to realize the stream's coming in. Then it records it. Now, on Roku, the show shows up right away. But if it's recording, there's a delay. And so I've had clients go, well, my, my intro got cut off. Well, put more time in the beginning of your intro before you put your important stuff in there. So they got to learn to change. They'll, they'll come to me and say, well, your software did this and this. I go, well, that's how it is. Just like YouTube has its issues when it comes to streaming and, and Facebook too. There's delays and stuff like that. So if you're going to be in this and you want to have a show on television, you've got to adapt your streaming processes. Put a little more time in your intro. You've got to shut down a little bit earlier than you do with audio to allow time for us to run identifications and commercials because we have to make our money just like you do. Now, we let our clients run their commercials on their shows when it's on their shows, um, but we're not running their commercials or anything like that after their shows, the break parts. That's for us. Um, and if you think you can do this and, and do it for free and stuff and not expect us to try to make some money, you're a fool because this is very costly and we have to get donations. We have to get commercials and we have to have our clients contribute to the TV station to cover the cost. Now with our clients, we, we do it at a very, very low rate, but we have a very big clientele. So a lot of a little makes a lot. So it works great for us, but other stations aren't quite so lucky. So I wanted to stop there for now and see what kind of questions come up uh, of what it takes to run your own TV station. So in the comments below, what questions you may have, maybe another video that you'd like us to follow up on, and then um, find out what it's like to actually own a TV station. So uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, let me uh, switch back over to this real quick and um, go to that. I got to wrap this show up. And I want to thank you very much for listening. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos. 
And I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a tour of what it's like to run cutting edge TV on Roku. So guys, have a great day. Be safe. Please leave your questions below. And we'll talk to you later. So bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.